Cool. What's going on, guys? Eric Geisen here, sales manager at the Honest Agent Team and GG Homes. Look, today, guys, we're going over the checklist for mega open houses. So before we get started, go ahead and pull out this sheet here. As I'll say, the mega open house agent responsibilities this is an actual checklist. You can just follow it down and do all the steps located on this list here. So we're going to dive through that, what that looks like. So first off, open house lists. Okay, so these are the mega open houses. Let me get on the board here. Okay, the distribution list. For all open houses, comes out typically around 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. every Tuesday. In there, there's usually between one and five properties available for megas. What do you do here? During the team meetings, we announce these are some of the properties that are coming up, and we'll reach out to a handful of people that we want to assign into Megas. If you're interested in doing Mega Open Houses, come talk to myself or Paul Burke so we can get this lined up. So usually right around, like after a team meeting, right around like 12 o'clock, 12.30, we'll go ahead and hand select the one to five properties that are designated for Megas. Everything else is going to go on the Open House distribution list that's sent out by SARA. It usually comes around 10 to 12 p.m., okay? Now, let's say you do get selected for a mega open house. What do you do? Pull out the sheet and start going through the steps. So, first one, record video. This is um, two days of the mega open house, talking about the house and what time your mega open house will be. So this is your preview video, right? So you're gonna say, you know, something like, Hey, what's going on guys? This is Eric. I'm outside of our new listing at 10460 Levita Court. This We have an open house this weekend. I'd love for you guys to come take a look at it from 1 to 4 p.m. There's a two bedroom, two bath house where we list right around 700,000. I'd love to see you there. So you're gonna send, take this video so you're gonna be able to utilize and send it out to our buyer pond and your buyers via BombBomb later. I recommend recording it on BombBomb, but if you also record on your cell phone, that's gonna be okay. You can embed it into BombBomb later. What are you going to do next? Okay, you're going to post this same video on our Facebook pages. And you're going to be tagging at GG Homes. If it's one of their projects, if it's not one of their projects, do not tag at GG Homes. And you're going to tag the honest agent. At myself, okay. I'm just gonna abbreviate at Eric Guidison, at Phil Green, at Christy Gray, at Mark Green, also at your partner, whoever you're doing the mega open house with, okay. Next step, when we kind of talk about this, you record the video, you're going to send it to Buyer Pond. Let's talk about this. Who are you sending it to? Let's say you're doing a property in Scripps Ranch, 92131. You're going to filter the Buyer Pond using tags for buyers that are looking in 92131, and you're going to send it to that zip code. Here's the other little rule of thumb here. Only send about 250 email message, video messages per day. If you go over this 250 mark, you can get flagged, but if you're using a Google account, it'll get flagged, and you might end up in everyone's spam inbox constantly. So you want to stay under 250 contacts in a single one-day period. It's really important. So go to the pond, in follow boss, tag 92131, send it upwards of 250 of this bomb bomb video saying hey it's a brand new open house love for you to come out 1 to 4 p.m here's how you reach me make sure in this video also leave your cell phone number so people can contact you directly in your email and do don't do any more than 250 per day okay if you pay for a google like g suite you can increase this amount but for everyone, all intents and purposes keep it at 250. All right, moving on. And then also on social, make sure you're tagging everyone. This is Facebook. Uh, Instagram would also be fantastic. 
If you post it from Instagram, it can route into Facebook so you can save a step. All right. Next step is go ahead and send a request. It's really it's a confirmation with Sara at GG Homes SD. Dot com, confirming that we got the thousand closest neighbors, thousand neighboring properties uploaded into Mojo. Or if we're using a different dialer in the future, make sure it's uploaded to that dialer. But for right now, uploaded into Mojo so you can begin calling. Okay. Next couple things you're going to be doing. Let's just talk about once this data is uploaded, it usually gets in around Wednesday. You want to call through these thousand homeowners. You want to make a minimum of 100 invites. So if you have two partners, what do you do? Do 50 50, do 75 25, work it out. Do 50 50 is my recommendation. Get at least 100 invites. The more people you have invited to the open house, the more buzz there is, the more chances that you're going to find someone that's looking to sell their property. The more chances you're going to have. If they know someone looking to buy that doesn't have an agent that represents them, the more chances that you're going to find a buyer who maybe is working with another agent but sees how much activity is on this property and wants to work with you directly. Why? Because you are the listing agent effectively for this open house. Okay? So do a ton of these invites here. Do a minimum of 100. We do check this thing. If you're low on this, we're going to be giving you a, sh a shout so we can try to fix that. Other things you want to do. Let's say that there's no pictures yet. Okay, a lot of these homes are just finished construction. They're ready to hit the market. We want to get them on the market right away. Sometimes we don't have photos done in time. So what happens if that ha if that's the case? You want to reach out to Michael or Mel. These are our project managers. Okay, these are our PMs. Who do you know is who's on this on on this specific property you can look on smart sheets for that property it'll tell you who the project manager is and what you want to do is say hey you know what hey michael i know you're doing this property um on holly avenue look there's no photos yet do you have photos or can you show me or direct me to another property that has similar you know layout and design as that of holly avenue because we can utilize these photos for our flyers before the property is ready. Can you go ahead and direct me to how to get those photos? So that's the next step. Moving on. Send a confirmation email with Christy. And Ashley. So this is Christy Gray at uh, real estate at gmail.com, Ashley at ggehomesd.com. It's a confirmation email that we can have Facebook marketing is up. Once you have the photos, if here's the deal, if there's not photos yet, send them the photos you just got from project management teams that hey, we can use this for our Facebook marketing. Can we make sure the Facebook marketing gets up? Typically, they'll start running these ads on Thursday, sometimes Friday, usually just the first 24 to 48 hours before the open house is up. Um, in addition to this, on your end, double check, now that I'm thinking about it, if it's a brand new listing that we're doing a mega on, which happens frequently, it hasn't been listed yet, make sure that there's a coming soon on the aggregator sites like Zillow that's up. If that's if it's already listed, though, just make sure that there's a signified open house if the property is, in fact, listed. Okay? How do we do this? You can correspond with Christy, our listing manager, Sheila, and also you can CC Sara to make sure that one of these two things is up for our aggregator sites. Next. 
Next on the list, you're going to email our preferred lender, Rodrigo Bayon and his team, and you want to request for a lender flyer. for this property. Let him know what price the home is going to be listed for and what or what range they'll be listed for. So they can make it an appropriate lender flyer. Okay? And the last things, the last couple things here. is email Paul Burke, P. Burke Wall, at Gmail, okay, and just confirm, hey, can we make sure we get the map done for Sign Center? Here's the deal, sign setter is a privilege. Not all teams are gonna always qualify to have a sign setter. There's gonna be weeks that we're not going to assign a sign setter, you're gonna be responsible for your own signs. That said, for the weeks that we do have availability for the sign setter and you do qualify for it, we're gonna go ahead and just make sure that the map's done with Paul Burke. He might actually say back, hey, can you go ahead and create the map, send it back to me, I'll do some revisions and make sure it gets out to our sign setter so that signs are then put up so we can get the 40 to 50 signs out there, okay? One of the last things here is, again, email Sarah, GG Homes SD. Okay, and send her the property address and ask for a flyer for canvassing and door knocking. This is your door knocking flyer. You're gonna wanna get 200 to 250 color copies. These are the copies that you're going to go out and are actually door knocking the day before and maybe the morning before. So maybe like Friday afternoon, Saturday morning, you and your partner are going to go ahead and door knock the closest 200 to 250 homes. If they don't answer, you're going to go ahead and drop the flyer at the door. And ask for these uh, flyers. A common thing that she needs is your headshots. If for some reason she doesn't have a copy of your headshot or your photos, make sure that she gets something that is adequate for a flyer if you don't have the headshots done yet. Okay. All right, so what does all this mean on the marketing side? Number one, so you have the data to go ahead and prospect the neighbors. You have the flyers to go door knock. You have the Facebook marketing is up, okay? You've reached out to the pond plus your personal buyers with the video. You have the sign setter, or you're putting the signs out, or you have the allotment of the 40 to 50 signs. Okay, this is all the prep for it. This is what's going to actually drive the traffic and get people in the door to give you opportunities to go ahead and sell people and convert buyers and or sellers in cash deals. Okay, let's talk about a packing list. So this is on your sheet here. I'm going to read these off. It's pretty self-explanatory. I'll dive into a couple couple points that maybe have some confusion on. We've already talked about a lot of this. Number one, if you do have a snack pack available or you have some couple snacks to bring with, maybe it's fruit, maybe it's a couple bag of chips, whatever, go ahead and bring that. Bottles of water, very inexpensive and economical, go ahead and grab a pack of water. Business cards, guys, so big. Business cards, everybody is gonna wanna ask for your card. I recommend having at least 100 cards at all times at these mega open houses. The flyers we talked about, you've already requested them, the lender flyers, the lead sheets, this is super important. Some of the more popular lead sheets are the off-market access lead sheets. I personally like to sign everyone in on a white sheet of paper, on a, a yellow notebook or whatever, but I also want to have these lead sheets for off-market access. If you don't have those, they're in the drive to go ahead and access 
lead sheets for off-market access properties. Next thing, uh, punch lists. Some of these properties are going to require a punch list. This will be emailed out to you by Sara um, and the rest of the admin team. If we do need a punch list, make sure you bring it with you and complete the punch list and bring it back to the office for that open house. If you have any questions about this, you can message Sara. And also, you want to reach out to Mark Green. Currently, if you're watching this video later on, it might be another individual, but for now, Sara and Mark Green. All right, here, diving in, this is super important. Know the inventory. This is also part of your prep work. Print out the active comps. And also find homes that are smaller, larger, or okay, lower in price, or higher in price. Maybe your property is a two bed. Here's my recommendation. Also find the three beds that are close by. Okay? Know the active comps, know the pending. Oh, this is so big. Okay? Why pending comps? You can take a buyer who maybe can't find what they're looking for, and maybe they saw another deal that they weren't able to get, they weren't in the market yet, they weren't ready, but you can be the hero and say, hey, why don't we go ahead and put a backup offering on that place together, and I'll see if I can go get it and get a showing. I'm gonna go talk to the agent, and what you do is go hustle and say, hey, you know, I know you have a property that's already pending, I have a buyer who's super interested, I'd love to put a backup offer, would you mind if we saw the place for a couple minutes just to give you that backup offer that maybe you guys will need in the future? So take a look at these pending comps. Active comps also, by the way, go view these things. If you have time, which, look, the better prepared that you are, the better you're going to be able to sell to people, go view these active comps. See what the layout's like. See what the bedroom bathroom's like. See what the street's like. Get a feel for it. Go check out those properties. Also, sold comps. Be able to justify value. Explain, look, there's other properties that are sold for 20 grand more than this. This is the deal. You guys got to move on this thing. It's going to go fast. The more that you know about the inventory, the better that you're going to explain this to future buyer clients. With these ones, here's what's great. If you have someone that comes in and you're doing a two-bedroom house, they want a three-bedroom, and you know there's an active three-bedroom comp right around the street, guess who's going to look like an expert? You. Okay? And if you have two partners, some of you guys can go actually during the open house to go view that other property and go make it happen right an offer. All right, moving forward. When you get to before the mega open house, here's my recommendation. Get there one hour early. And minimum, get there 30 minutes early as a requirement. You're going to have people that are chomping at the bit that are super motivated that want to be the first people in the house. Now, if you're at an owner-occupied house, verify that you can come at these times, okay? They might still be in the property. So if it's owner-occupied, just confirm that you can go a little bit earlier. If it's one of our vacant homes, that's in a, a fix and flip. These, obviously, they're vacant. Go view it early. What do you do during this period of time right here? Okay? Number one, I'd still keep the door open. But I'd be doing this. I'd be checking the signs, make sure the signs are done adequately. I'd make sure your setup is done well. Your display, your easel, your flyers are on place, your business cards are out, it's presentable. Okay. If you have additional time, go walk the neighborhood or maybe you'll go look at some of the active comps. Go door knock. Maybe continue doing some calling while you're there. Say, hey, we just showed up at the open house. We're going to be here today from 1 to, one to 4. About getting it started in about 30 minutes. We're actually at the property now. We want to come take a look at it. Role play with your partner. Role play the scripts to get good at these open houses. Go through the whole intro. 
and into asking good qualifying questions and getting people excited about the property and asking for offers, asking for the business, asking for the next best exposure. Okay, all these different things you should be doing prior to this open house. One of the most common things, though, is making sure signs are set up correctly and the setup's done well, and then all of this should have already been worked on. Next thing, when you're here, one more thing, go live on Facebook and Instagram. Say, hey, we're here today, we're live, we're about to get started for open house, we're so excited for all you guys to come and take a look at this property. Boom, go ahead and go live. Also, make sure you tag the same suspects here, Honest Agent, myself, Phil, Christy, the whole gang, okay? Now, during your open house, you guys have the ability, as a team, to do one of two things, okay? As far as leads that come in, you can split every other Every other person that comes in the door, that's that person's lead, that person's commissions, that if it's a two-person team. Or you, can got, you guys can decide to do some type of split. I'll let you figure it out. Most of the time, this is a 50-50 split. In some scenarios, maybe it's different. I'll let you guys go ahead and figure this out. Most of the time, it is a 50-50 split. Go ahead and get as much content information as you can. Go ahead and schedule for the next exposures. Get all that out. Now, when you end of your open house, okay? What's gonna end up happening, you'll probably have somewhere between 10 and maybe 50 sign-ins, maybe more. Here's what I would do. While I'm taking notes on all these different prospects that come in, buyer, seller, etc., I'm gonna <coughs> identify the top five to 10 hottest prospects. And if I haven't already scheduled an appointment or written an offer with them, I'm going to go ahead and call them and thank them for coming in. Hey, thank you so much uh, for coming in. I, I know you guys are thinking about selling in the next 36 months. I'd love to stay in touch with you. I have your contact information. I, this is the email. I just want to confirm it. Here's the next exposure. Let's go ahead and get together in three months from now. But I also am going to give you a call later, you know, later in a couple days to set you up on a, on a search. It's going to show you all the inventory that's coming to market so you can kind of see where the market's at and kind of get an idea before you guys are ready to sell. Boom. Make that phone call. They don't answer. Leave a voicemail and text. Now, let's say you have 50 people and you've just gone through your first 5 to 10. What do you do with the other 40? You might not have time to call all 40, and I understand that. Make sure you send out a text at the very minimum, and consolidate all your lists, and then game plan with your partner on who follows up with who. Because if you have 50, you probably want to split this up. And what usually happens is one partner will talk to 25 of them, the other partner is going to talk to the other 25. So make sure you consolidate your lists. Make sure all, everyone's accounted for it, and then split up the work that's going to be done. If you guys both talk to the same prospect, who had the best rapport with them? Who's going to be best suited to go ahead and follow up with them? Maybe one of the partners has showings right afterwards. Have the other partner then take that list, move it into Follow Boss, move these all into Follow Boss, and then start the follow-up campaigns. Open House is the, the best way to convert at open houses is actually the follow-up. It's not so much getting a bunch of people in the door, it's not so much just selling at the property. The people that really win at open houses, yes, you have to do these things, it's really all the follow-up. So if you're gonna spend all this time prepping for this mega open house, investing all this money and, and energy, and running a successful open house for four, three, four hours, the real game is actually the follow-up afterwards. So don't stop there, don't stop at just because it's four o'clock, 4.30, it's time to go home. This is when you should be hitting your texts, hitting your calls, doing everything. Here's my recommendation. Do it at the property if you can. Why? Because if you go home, you start driving around, you get tired, you grab something to eat, and all of a sudden you're distracted, you forget to do it, go ahead and do it at the property. It's going to make you way more money. Trust me on this one. It's all about the immediate follow-up. So be calling, texting, 
get it into Follow Boss, send out those emails, try to personalize them as much as you can, saying, hey, I know we talked about X, Y, and Z, you know, I know it didn't work for you, here's some other examples, maybe you should send them some other properties, and put in the work. This is where the whole game starts. Now, what I'd be doing for follow-up on these, By, by Saturday on Saturday, you said the open house, everyone should get a minimum of one touch, one additional touch, minimum. You should be shooting for three plus already on the first day. Okay, so these leads that came in Saturday, one touch minimum, three plus would be ideal. Sunday, you don't have anything scheduled already, I haven't been able to get in touch with them again. I would, I would also do a minimum of one touch Ideal three plus. By Monday, you're back in the office. You're not doing the open house again. Right here, I'd be grinding them. I'd do a minimum of three touches here until you get a hold of them. And then through Tuesday on, I'd do a minimum of one to two touches a day. The people that are the most aggressive and the most consistent and the fastest to respond are people that are going to win this business for motivated buyers. Don't wait until Monday afternoon to do your follow-up. I know it's easy to do because you just did a long week of open houses, but that's where you're going to miss out on so much business. People say, ah, oh, open houses don't work. Well, I, I promise you it's probably because your follow-up isn't aggressive enough right here. All right, one more thing about all of this. Um, obviously, you're, you're, text, you're texting if you have to. You're calling the most important ones right away. I'm calling all of them, but you know the most important ones right away. Your email, and also don't forget about this. Real Scout. This is the best piece of software for buyers that we've ever seen. The engagement is incredible and also does a lot of the work for you. They're sending out real time emails using AI to say, hey, this property could work for you. You're also getting them set up in the search. They're going to see you, you, you because your picture's on it. And you're sending them all these emails from Real Scout. Get them onto Real Scout right away. Now, on Monday, let's talk about the day after. So this is kind of like throughout the week, but this is like your follow-up. Let's dive in on some more specifics on Monday. So on Monday, send in the completed punch list to operations. At GG Homes SD, okay? And the project man and CC the project manager Michael or Mel. Into all leads have to be in the follow up boss and the source open house. This will allow us to track and audit your leads to make sure nothing's falling through the cracks. Turn on open house action plan. This is going to give you a step-by-step -step action plan through your follow boss system on how you should be following up with these leads. And lastly, we had just talked about it, I'll say it again, make sure everyone is added to Real Scout. That is how you run a mega open house, and that's how you convert buyers to this system. I recommend also watching this with our open house training videos. And look, someone who does these on a weekly basis, they're going to convert a ton of buyer deals and also get quite a few listings just off these open houses. Follow this system, get used to it. I know it seems like a lot, but everything's convenient for you here on this checklist. If you have any questions, come talk to us. Thank you.